Hi, and welcome to the Beginning Excel course. My name is Steve Moore, and I'm betting that you're anxious to jump right in and start working with the formulas and all the powerful features Excel has to offer. And you know what? You can do that. The videos in the first lesson of this course are introductory in nature, and we'll walk you through all the parts of the Excel interface, where we'll discuss things like keyboard shortcuts and navigation techniques. But if you just can't wait to jump into the good stuff, feel free. The course is designed so that you can easily find a subject that interests you and start learning right away. That said, if you're new to Excel, you'll find the videos in this first lesson pretty informative. So let's get started. Our first topic is the user interface. Excel is a program that works with spreadsheets. You've probably heard the term before and may not have known what it meant. Well, basically a spreadsheet is an electronic document that uses columns and rows to store data. The data can be numbers or text. Excel isn't a spreadsheet itself, but rather a program that creates spreadsheets. Along the way, providing the user, that's you and me, with a whole slew of powerful tools for working with our data. A spreadsheet in Excel is called a worksheet. Spreadsheet is the generic term, while the term worksheet is specific to Excel. Sort of like a vehicle can be a car, but if you call a car a Ford, now you're being more specific. The terms can be used interchangeably without any confusion. This is a spreadsheet, or to be more specific, an Excel worksheet. And since we've been talking about worksheets, let's break with conventional wisdom and start at the bottom and work up, because right down here in the bottom left-hand corner, you'll see that Excel provides us with three worksheets right off the bat. In fact, these three worksheets, Sheet 1, Sheet 2, and Sheet 3, form a collection known as a workbook. So, a workbook is a collection of worksheets, and if you click on each of these worksheets, you see that you can easily navigate between them. Now, the worksheet is a collection of cells, and that's what each one of these little blocks are that you see here. And every cell has a name. The name of the cell is defined by the intersection at which it sits. For example, we have this column here, A, in this row, 1. So, this first cell would be cell A1. The second cell down would be cell A2, and so forth. Now, you might wonder, how many cells are there on a worksheet? Well, to answer that, we're going to take a look in the bottom right-hand corner of the worksheet, and you'll see these two arrows here. The down-pointing arrow will move us down in the worksheet, while the right-pointing arrow is going to move us to the right. So, if you just click the right-pointing arrow a couple times, you'll notice that the letters at the top of the screen are scrolling off to the left. And I'm interested in what happens when we reach the end of the alphabet. And we get to X, Y, Z, and sure enough, what happens is the alphabet just doubles up. A, 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 B, A, C, and so forth. We can continue out even further, and when we get to the end of the alphabet again, it's going to double up again. B, A, B, 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 C. So the question is, how far out does this really go? Well, we could just hold our mouse down on this scroll button, and you can see that it's just moving along pretty quickly. But it's still going to take a while to get to the right edge, so the best thing to do is hold down the control key and tap the right arrow on your keyboard. So this takes us to the extreme right edge of the worksheet. And rather than having you figure out the math on this, column XFD, that translates to 16,384 columns. Well, that's a lot. In fact, if you're coming to this version of Excel from 2003, you'll know that's a lot more columns than you had there. There you had only 256. All right, now to quickly get back to cell A1, you can hold down the control key and hit home on the keyboard. And then let's take a look at the rows. Now we're going to take this scroll arrow here and just hold it down a little bit, and you can see the numbers scrolling off the top of the worksheet now. And just like before, if you keep that button held down, you'll eventually get to the bottom of the worksheet. However, i got to warn you, it's going to take a long time to get down there because, well, if you hold down control and hit down arrow, you'll see what I mean. The bottom row is 1,048,576. And oh my gosh, if you do the math on that and multiply the columns times the rows, you'll come up with over 17 billion cells in a worksheet. That's a lot of cells. And if we're going to use all of them in this lesson, we better get started. All right, back to cell A1, control home. Taking a look in the bottom left-hand corner again, let's look at this button right here. This is called the Insert Worksheet button. And when you click on it, don't you know that it inserts a new worksheet? In fact, you can just happily go about adding new worksheets as much as you want. 
Now at some point you're going to get out here where you have so many worksheets that there isn't enough room to show the first couple worksheets. But what do you do then? You come over here and you use these tab scrolling buttons. Like a VCR control, you can click this first button and it takes you to the first worksheet. Or you can click on this button and it takes you to the last worksheet. And then the two buttons in between are Previous and Next. You also might like to know that this little bar here allows you to hide some of the worksheets if you need more room for this scroll bar right here. In that case, this really comes in handy. But this little guy here can just be drugged back and forth, no problem. While we're down here, let's take a look at the right-hand side. On the right, we have the zoom slider. The zoom slider can be moved to the right, making the screen larger. This is the equivalent of taking a piece of paper and just moving it closer to your nose. Or, you can take the slider and drag it to the left, and this is the equivalent of moving the paper farther away from your nose. In addition to that, you have a plus sign on the right and a minus sign on the left. When you click repeatedly on the plus sign, it just moves you in incrementally. Of course, you can figure out what the minus sign does when you click on that. Moving up to the top right-hand side of the screen, and you'll see that there's two sets of nearly identical buttons. The top set controls the application window, that is, the entire Excel environment, while the second set controls just the current workbook. We're going to take a look at the current workbook control buttons first. First thing we'll do is click on this button here. Now whenever you hover over the button, a screen tip appears and it tells us that the name of that button is Restore Window. When you click it, it makes the workbook window smaller. In fact, you can drag it around inside the application window. You can resize it by grabbing a hold of the corners and dragging in. You can also use this button to completely minimize that window. When you do this, it takes it clear down to the bottom left-hand corner and just exists there as that one little bump down there. To bring it back up to full size, you can click the Maximize button, or if you just want to bring it up to the smaller size, you can click the Restore Up button. You may notice that when the workbook is in a smaller condition, that the title of the workbook appears in the top left-hand corner of that window. For example, here it says Book 1. We should know then that Excel always provides a name for a workbook until you save it and give it a better name. Excel won't open a workbook without giving it a name. So when you first fire up Excel, it presents you with a brand new workbook called Book 1. And then any subsequent workbooks that you create will be called Book 2, Book 3, and so forth. Now watch what happens to the name when I maximize the window. Now it goes clear to the top of the window where it says Book 1, Microsoft Excel. And by the way, this is called the title bar. The workbook's close button is right here. Whenever you click the X, it closes the window or closes the workbook. And if you've made any changes to the workbook, it'll ask you if you want to save the changes. In this case, I'm going to say don't save. Now what we're left with is the Excel application window with no open workbooks. This is like having a typewriter with no paper in the Plactin. And you'll notice that whenever you don't have an open workbook, that most of the commands here at the top are grayed out, indicating that you can't use them. To create a new workbook, I'll go to File and click on New. And then just click Create. Notice now that we're looking at Book 2, and all the commands and buttons at the top of the screen are once again available to us. And finally, if you have any computing experience at all, the top buttons will be familiar to you here. They work just like they do in any other Windows application. Minimize, maximize, and close.